Well, good job, man. You did it. I feel like I know everything about you now. That was surprising that it was 50. Yeah. It it, went pretty fast. It goes quick, right? And everyone now knows all the things about Joe. You're going to have people coming up to you this weekend offering you walking tacos. I feel like all my answers were passion and walking tacos. Yes. It was like 25% of my answers. 48 of them were passion and walking tacos. Hey everybody, welcome to a bonus episode of the No Easy Way Out podcast, Kerwood Festival edition. Uh, my name is Tony Nash and we are coming to you as always from the Woodworth building in beautiful downtown Owasso, home to my company, AZ Business Solutions, where we help grow your brand from A to Z. I'm joined today by the one and only Joe Peterson. Joe, welcome to the show, man. Well, thank you for having me. I appreciate it. I've never been a bonus edition before. You are a bonus today, and you told <laughs> us you woke up this morning singing our theme song, No Easy Way Out. I'm not sure how. It's, I didn't even know that was your theme well, song. Well, hey, that's our theme song, and you know that's a, that's a good way to start any day, in my opinion, right? I, so <laughs> I have to agree. So far, so good. Yeah, so you are, I mean, there's a lot of things we could talk about. Today, we're going to really talk about the Kerwood Festival, and uh, you are the president of the infamous Kerwood Festival. So tell us a little bit just about yourself first before we really dig into that. About myself. Um, I'm a Christian. I'm a Me too. American patriot. I'm a husband of almost 32 years now. Um, you were gonna say 32 kids. 32, <laughs> two kids. Um, so I'm a father and just became a grandfather. Still getting used to that title a little Congratulations. bit. Congratulations. Um, Boy or girl? Boy. All Baby right. Nash. Yeah. <laughs> Perfect. That's right. Yeah. Well, that's his name? Nash. What a great name. That's a fantastic name. Not a bad name. name. That's I, love it. I, I love thought it. you might like that. Um, I've been a uh, pre-planning funeral director for the last 13 years and the last three with Nelson House and McGeehan. And um, I'm happy to be home yeah. and be, in, be involved. So, Wasso is home, right? Wasso is home. So tell us a little bit about the Kerwood Festival. For those who are watching, obviously, if they're in the local area, they, they know a lot. But tell us some of the things about the festival that you love and maybe some of the things that people don't know. It, this is our 46th year, and it is, it's all American, Americana yeah. tradition, small town festival. Yeah. And it has just a little bit of everything for everybody. And you know, we, we are steeped in tradition. Things like the Heritage Parade and Marketplace and Arts and Crafts and the Carnival. Uh, but we add new stuff every year. Yeah. Um, I would say over the past 46 years, 100 events have come and gone. Yeah. But we, we stick to some staple things and we, and we try new stuff too. It's just we try to make it a variety pack for the entire weekend for whoever wants to be engaged and involved. Down. Well, you know, I, I imagine with the last couple of years with COVID, it made the festival. I know there was a year or two where we didn't have a festival. Is that correct? There was one year we did one not. One year. Yes. And so has it been a challenge getting people to come back since they kind of took a year off? What have you guys seen there? Well, I think I can't really say that it's been a challenge because our carnival and our food vendors have had a couple of their most successful years the last couple of years. Awesome. So there's still a lot of engagement. I think one of the things that happened during Kerwood is when we we missed out on a year so people they missed realized it, it and they yeah. they knew it was just an important part important part of their summer and to you know to get things kicked off so they came back pretty full force full force yeah they were excited i remember yeah, yeah i mean whenever anything would reopen even if it was something you didn't normally participate you're like oh i gotta go because yeah. just a little sense of normalcy <laughs> well yeah. how long have you been involved with kerwood oh goodness i started my <sighs> Back in 1988, when Kevin Phillips ran wow. for Mr. Owasso, wow. he, uh, my entire family became in, engrossed in his campaign, raising money for ARC. And, and then I ran again in 1992, 
after that became involved with the board, then became the chairperson for the for the Mr. Owasso event. So it's been a long sure, long journey. Long I didn't realize you've been involved that long. In in a variety of different aspects. Very but, cool. Well, speaking of yeah. Mr. Owasso, we have one of our own running for Mr. Owasso. Tell our audience a little bit about what Mr. Owasso is. I've had a lot of people ask me, what is Mr. Owasso? What do they do? And I guess, you know, I've always <clears throat> known about Mr. Owasso. I've learned more about it this year, having Casey run. Um, and I know there's a lot involved around, you know, raising yeah. money for charity. Um, but uh, people are like, where can I vote? And I'm like, well, it's not really voting. So yeah. tell our audience a little bit about the Mr. Owasso campaign and how they can be involved. Well, there's a lot to share with Mr. Owasso. Number one, it's the, it's the greatest fundraising event in the world. And yeah. most people don't realize that. Yeah. Uh, this is, we are looking to crown our 40, Third, Mr. Owasso, I'm not, don't quote me on the number, but we're right in that ballpark, 43rd, 44th. Um, it started out as a really simple one day event of just raising funds. And, and a group of guys from Owasso got together and said, let's, let's see who can raise the most money. <laughs> and then it has evolved into, into a, it was a four week spectacle of just nonstop fundraising. We've made some adjustments to it, so we're down to three weeks just kind of a natural evolution of, sure. of life. But uh, it, yeah, it's just, it's a fundraising event. It's a, it's a story sharing event as well. So these guys and gals, we've had a couple of females run for Mr. Owasso and I encourage more <laughs> to. Yeah. Um, Maybe we need to have a Mrs. But, Owasso. Well, we'll never have one of those. <laughs> if, if, well, they'll be Mr. Owasso's. If they win, they're yeah. Mr. Owasso's. That's part you. of the deal. Okay. That's not going away. <laughs> okay. And, uh, but it's a, it's a great format to, to share the story, not only of who you are in the community, but your nonprofit. And what you're passionate about. And what yeah. you're passionate about. And it is a, it's a wonderful opportunity to, to not only do a great thing for that nonprofit, but to share their story. So, so we you have that. three guys involved this year. We Dallas do. Lintner, he's running for the YMCA. Right. Gerald Alcorn is running for... Toys for Tots. Toys for Tots. And then yeah. Casey Lambert, our very yeah. own, is running for the ARC. Yes. And so basically, the way somebody wins is whoever raises the most money. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. So the, way you, correct. the way you cast your vote is go donate to right. one of these right. great charities. Check. And all three of those are great charities they to are. donate and to. And all that so money stays you local. can't lose. The money stays in the community. Yeah, that's amazing. Um, Kerwood takes 15% of it to keep our festival alive. Yeah. Which, keeping our festival alive, keeps the contest alive. Yeah. So... Yeah, everybody benefits. Well, we do have a great festival, and I've been to other town festivals, and I will say this. Like, we have one of the coolest parades still going around, I think. I mean, we get a big turnout for the parade every single year. We have two great parades. Yeah. The kids' parade, the kids parade on Friday is fun, night yeah. is an absolute blast. And, and not only do the kids love it, but the community comes out in, in groves, droves to to watch and support these kids. Yeah. So the kids parade is a great way to warm up yep. for the heritage, which is on Saturday. Yeah, I love the kids and parade. And the heritage parade, too. there's not too many parades better around. Oh, um, there really isn't. Yeah. It, 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 you always get a huge turnout. I mean, you go from, basically, you go from Hardee's down to Shell in Westtown, and it, the streets are lined, and people start lining up their chairs like two days before, and you're driving down up to the pretty and amazing. blankets and chairs, and people want to get their seats. Now, I have to ask you a question, since you're the president. We were pretty excited. We're in the parade this year, and we were gonna. Uh, we had this idea that we were gonna drive our little AZ van, and we were gonna shoot free T-shirts out of these uh, T-shirt cannons that Casey made for us. We were so excited to shoot T-shirt cannons, and then we found out you can't shoot things off. Yeah, I understand why, but maybe here publicly, you want to just give us a little exception. Well, you know what <laughs> you can do. If we could drop the whole oh. cannon thing, you can just walk along the sidewalk and well, hand them out. That's what we're going to do. It's a little safer. We're, we're getting some hype men like, trying to get marketing. in the crowd crazy, you know, <laughs> and we'll give t-shirts to the ones who really show that they yeah. want one like at the games. But we were just excited to be shooting some t-shirt cannons, but we'll find other ways to do that as yeah. well. <laughs> Casey takes a t-shirt cannon to pretty much any sales meeting he goes to to show them like, here's what a t-shirt would look like. And then he shoots it at them. Yeah. So. <laughs> no well, the one, heritage no parade, one's been hurt yet. again, just a fantastic slice of Americana, yeah. you know, and to, to see the excitement and everybody uh, just cheering on for, you know, the, 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 the participants in the parade. Yeah. I mean, it's heartwarming. I get and some impressive floats as well. Yeah. yeah. And, and we've got royalty coming from all over the state. 
um, we've got a, a couple local marching bands and and uh, Cami Smith has just done a fantastic job in cheering that event and building it up to what it is right now. And but it is a long-standing, wonderful tradition for our community. And absolutely, festival. we love it. Yeah, we love it. We sure do. Well, what do you love most? I mean, I can hear the passion when you talk about it. But what do you love most about this gig and just you know giving of your time to do this a great event? Well, you know, I've been, I have volunteered my time and efforts. As long as I've been home. Um, and so we're talking over the past 40 years or so. And I've been involved with city council, um, park and rec commission. I was uh, on the school board for Corona Schools. When I sold real estate, I was on the board. Of, I was on the real estate board of directors and served as president for a couple of years. So I've always believed in in giving and being in, engaged and involved with the community. Um, I got to a point uh, about a year ago, actually, um, where life was it was got to be too much for me to be on the sure. school board and be the president oh, yeah. of the festival and uh, be engaged with with five different funeral homes and. Um, just life in general. And yeah. I'm like, I need to cut some stuff out. I couldn't cut out Kerwood. I couldn't do it. <laughs> it was awesome. my fun release, yeah. you know? It, and not only is it a meaningful thing for our community, but it is a blast. And I love my Kerwood board family. I love all of our volunteers and our, our civic groups that are engaged in. And it's just a, it's just a fun, healthy uh, tradition that we have in this community. And I'll, I'll do whatever I can to, to keep it alive and, and keep it growing in a positive direction. So Yeah, it really is a fun event. There's so many things happening from the, the carnival right down here by City Hall to the yep. Kerwood Castle Park to uh, right here behind us uh, on Exchange Street, all the vendors and all the yep. things going on. Yep. And then you know on Saturday you have the Farmer's Market. And you know it really is just an, a, a cool event to bring out the whole family. You forget about all yeah. the politics and the drama in the world. Just go have a good time, have some cotton yeah. candy, some element ears, elephant ears, ride some rides, and then throw it all up and then go back and buy some more. Yeah. But uh, it's just a great event, and uh, I'm looking forward to it. Yeah. I'm more of a walking taco guy. You're a walking taco and, and guy. Yeah. There will be walking Th those tacos. Those are delicious. That was part of the stipulation for me being president this year. <laughs> this is one that of the rules. We've got to have walking tacos. <laughs> I like it. I like it. Yeah. Maybe next year we'll walk down the parade route and give out walking tacos. Well, there you we'll, go. we'll shoot them out in the air. No, just joking. <laughs> so I think, though, what I'm hearing is, you know, I love the fact that you've been so involved with the community. I didn't realize you had been involved in so many things. And uh, just recently in my life, I've been thinking, and I've been in Owasso pretty much my whole life. I had a short stint in New York, but I, I've been here. And I like to think that I'm very vol involved in the community, but I haven't really, you know, if I'm being honest, volunteered for uh, boards and committees like I uh, probably should have. And I think you're a good testament of someone that has just not just loved his community, but been involved in finding ways to uh, keep the community that you love to advance the community forward, to make sure that things are going the way that they should. And I love that. Yeah. So I think that's a testament that everyone should really try to find ways to get involved. Are, are there ways to get involved with Kerwood? Do you need volunteers? Well, I'm, I'm glad you asked that question. <laughs> if we go back in time 10, 15, 20 years ago, Kerwood Festival had a list of over 400 volunteers wow. to help out with all of the events throughout the entire weekend we have barely a hundred right now. Really? And it has been taxing and we get sure. a lot of, we get a lot of, com I don't want to say a lot of complaints, but we have a lot of suggestions from community members saying, Hey, why don't we do this? Why doesn't Kerwood have this event? Why you guys should do this. Yeah. We can't cause yeah. we don't have the manpower. Yeah. You know, so how does somebody it, go about getting involved with that? Stand up. Yeah. Raise your hand. We don't say no to anybody. Yeah. They just um, need to come down to the Kerwood office yeah. or send a message. Yep. Okay. Just reach out to any board member or go straight to the Kerwood office. And, and what just would, say, hey, I really want to help, and we'll find something for you for sure. Okay. So, so what would volunteering look like? Would they be, uh, what, would, what would a volunteer be doing typically? Well, typically, a volunteer is going to be assigned to a specific event okay. just to, to make it happen. And there's a lot of footwork that needs to go into it. Um, this isn't something that just happens on Kerwood oh, weekend. Sure. Yeah. This is, I mean, to make this festival happen, we start, believe it or not, we start in July. Yeah. 
Yeah, I believe it. And uh, because it, I mean, it depends on the on the event itself. But let's say, for example, Mr. Owasso, we have our first Mr. Owasso meeting in November. Yeah. And and we meet almost monthly, sometimes more often than that, even in certain situations. So it's a, it's a it's a commitment, um, but it depends on the event. A lot of moving. It parts. could just be showing up um, because you want to help keep our uh, our uh, Kerwood Lounge tent clean. Yeah. You know, you want to show up in the morning and and wipe down tables and and sweep. It can be something as simple as that, or it can be, hey, I want to be involved with the, the Kerwood pageant. How do, what can I do to help make that pageant um, bigger and better every year? And, and, that, and that takes a little bit more of a commitment. But there's, it's, there's, such a, there's so many things, and there's so many different ways that somebody can step up and help as a volunteer. All right. And you know, Casey and I were just talking about it um, before we started the podcast about... Um, being a volunteer and, and stepping out of your comfort zone a little bit and just standing up and saying, Hey, what can I do to help? And that's all it really takes to be a volunteer. Yeah. Well, so Simple if you're, if you're interested, if you, number one, if you love the Kerwood festival, you want it to keep going, you want to uh, be help, uh, be a help, then stop down at the Kerwood office on Washington street. Let them know you want to volunteer, uh, send them a message on Facebook. I'm sure that probably would get to the right person as well. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, help get involved and help keep our event going here. Please do. We'll make it happen. Yes. So tell us about some of the things going on at the festival this year, maybe some of the things that are going to continue, and maybe some new things that you've added. The arts and craft area down by the Kerwood, by Kerwood Castle is twice what it was a year ago. We've really had, and maybe it has something to do with the 100th anniversary of the castle, which is our our main focus in our our celebration not only the life of james oliver kerwood and and his legacy but the castle itself this year is, is turning 100 so uh there's been some great um, interest in participation in that arts and crafts area so that's going to be a must see also about three years ago after after covid occurred and we didn't have a festival the board decided that we didn't want to be in the beer tent business we didn't want to be in beer sales business that didn't align with our mission statement as a festival however there was a place for it in this festival and so we reached out to community members and and sideline stepped up and they said we want to host the beer tent so we are bringing it back and with great enthusiasm <laughs> and great interest and, and I'd just like to share that it's, it's more than just a beer tent. You don't have to drink beer to go to the beer tent. Right. It is a, it's a gathering place. It's, it's a place for entertainment. We have some fantastic bands and, and performers coming in. We do have beer tasting coming in. This is, that's a new thing for the festival that weekend. Uh, and I say that the weekend for the community because it's not just in the beer tent. It's throughout town in a right. couple locations. Um, it's a gathering place for people who are running in the 5 and 10K on Saturday morning. Mm -hmm. um, we're hosting our, our hospitality event there on Thursday night. So it, it's, it's more than just beer. It, it is a gathering place and a place to celebrate yeah, the place. festival. Yeah. So we're, we're really excited and thankful for Sidelines to, for stepping up and, and making that happen for the, for the festival. Awesome. So you mentioned that uh, it's the 100th year anniversary of the Kerwood Castle. Um, will the castle be open during the festival? Oh, yes. So yeah, so I, great opportunity to get in and, yes. and, and have a tour and, and really get a sense for who James Oliver Kerwood was. Yeah, it's yeah. amazing to me how many people I've talked to in Owasso that have never been to the castle, didn't know it was there. You know, when I lived in New York, they would say that like 80% of uh, people who live in New York City have never been to the Statue of Liberty. So, yeah. I mean, it's just kind of like that. It's there, yeah. we see it, we don't go. But it is really cool to see the history and to realize, like, James Oliver Kerwood was a big deal. Like, yeah. he was a celebrity back in the day. And yeah. seeing why he built the castle, it's pretty cool. So if you're around during that weekend, you should stop down to the castle and check it out. It's pretty cool. Yeah. It's he was neat. he was the highest paid author in, like, 1927 in oh. the world. Yeah. I think I, I had read somewhere that he had, at, at one point, he had more movies made about his books than any other author ever as well, right? At one point. Quite possibly. There's been 
unofficially, there's been over 200, like 220 movies that were based and or Loosely inspired based, yeah. by his writings. That's crazy. So, yeah. it's pretty amazing. That's incredible. Yep. Yeah. Any movies that we would know of? Quite possibly. <laughs> uh, I want to say River's End, which was, I think John Wayne was in that. Yeah. And The Bear. Is needed The Bear. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Those are probably the two that stick out in my memory, but I'm not yeah. an aficionado by any stretch of the imagination. Well, go check it out. I guess I would ask this, and, and I think I probably know the answer, but I want to hear it from you. Who is the person or the people that should come to the Kerwood Festival? Yeah. Any, anybody that is that has a pulse. Yeah. <laughs> it, 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 we are a family festival. Yeah, you know, with the carnival and, and a lot of the different events that we have, including the parades and arts and crafts and marketplace, we are we are a family festival. Uh, but we're not limited to that. It's it's really if you just like to to celebrate that small town Americana feel and, and just have fun with friends, uh, yeah. we're open to anybody. It, it's really we're we're pretty eclectic when it comes to that. Awesome for sure. Well, go check out the festival. I got to ask before we move on to our our 50 questions that we'll do with you here. We're going to we're trying a new segment on the podcast and we'll talk to you about that here in a second. Okay. Um, but when I was growing up, I was like always looked forward to the Kerwood 3 on 3. Like I was a big basketball player. Now I really just coach cuz I can't play much anymore. Um is the Kerwood three on three coming back? Is it still around? There, there, there is a three on three event. Oh, there is. Yes. Oh, cool. Yep. And like I said, over the course of the the lifetime of this festival, events have come and gone. Sure. Um, that's that is one that yeah it disappeared for a little bit, but it, it's back. Yeah, I know. I mean, not as many young people go outside and play sports anymore. I just, yeah. I mean, that's just happening. But I know when I was a kid, man, it was like. 100 teams there were people coming from all over the state to play and it got rough sometimes i mean it was yeah. really a street ball tournament yeah. but it was it was a lot of fun the same so. thing happened when we used to have bed races yeah i remember the bed um, races. there would be hundreds of people spectating it, and it was it, but it it would get wild and crazy and for safety reasons we had to yeah. find other things to do <laughs> <That's> <laughs> awesome well listen fun. get down to the kerwood festival the first weekend in june and uh, enjoy it. There's lots of things. Where can Amen. someone go to see all the things happening for Kerwood Festival? You can go to the Kerwood Festival website. Okay. And you can, it'll tell it's you, it'll, it'll show you a map. It'll list all the events and times. And yeah, you won't miss a thing. Well, we're excited to be partnering with Kerwood this year. Yeah. We're one of the sponsors and we're excited to be doing so. We're going to be doing some video. I think we're going to have some great video content to share with the community afterwards yeah. to not only recap the event but to also promote next year's event so yep. we're and, really looking forward to that and i appreciate that and and i think it's going to be a fantastic and healthy and beneficial relationship yes me too as well yep. okay so i mentioned to you that we're starting this new segment this year every season of the podcast this is season five by the way 50 questions you're yeah. making me nervous <laughs> we always try to add a new segment <laughs> to keep it fresh the idea is to get to know our guest and i'm a talker and so you know every since I started the podcast three years ago, um, I've had this goal of doing these 30-minute episodes. I don't know if it will ever happen, but um, it's still a goal, right? Um, and so I thought, how can we get to know our guests really, really well um, in, a, in a quick amount of time for the, so that it's consumable for the audience? Sure. Because most people don't want to listen to me talk for an hour and a half. Well, I tend to be an introvert, so I don't know. I'll just do my best to try to yeah, So try we're going to do 50 rapid-fire questions. You've heard of 20 questions. This is 50 questions, okay? So we're not looking for a long answer unless you want to give us. We're okay. going to just go through this, and we're going to get to know all things Joe here. Are we ready for that? Okay, I don't have a clue if I'm ready or not. Well, we'll find out right okay. now. All right, here Let's we go. This. How did you start your day today? Uh. Coffee with my wife. All right. If you could spend the day with anyone in the world, who would that be? In the world? Alive? Elon Musk. What would you do with that person? I would observe. <laughs> what is the one thing you would love to master? Oh, I would say my golf game, but that's impossible. That doesn't even... That takes a lot of effort. Thing. <laughs> Are you a texter or a caller? 50 50. Who was the last person you called or texted? Probably Casey Lambert. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Where were you born and raised? Owasso. Where did you go to high school? Corona. Uh, did you go I to college? Did you go to college? 
CMU, class right. of 88. And what did you study at CMU? Psychology and sociology. What have you done for the first time very recently? The very first time recently. Went to Clearwater, Florida. Very cool. In 10 years, what will you regret, what will you regret doing way too much of? Worrying about where I'll be 10 years from now. <laughs> If you could resurrect one person from history and place them in today's world, who would it be? Abraham Lincoln. What is your favorite thing about Owasso? Small town, friendly, Americana. Love it. What is your perfect dessert? Glass of milk and two Oreo cookies. That's a solid choice. <laughs> What is the strangest nickname you've ever been given? My first nickname, I don't, I don't know how many I've had, actually. My first one was Putt-Putt. Putt-Putt. Yeah, it had <laughs> nothing to do with golf, either. <laughs> what is the most important quality that a successful person should have? Commitment. What is a daily habit that everyone should do? Daily habit everyone should do? Make your bed. What is your favorite fast food? Popper. <laughs> Burger King, no, all right. I don't eat fast food. <laughs> what is your, I'm with you there. What is your go-to karaoke song? Garth Brooks, Friends in Low Places, without question. <laughs> Solid choice. I can't wait to hear that. Uh, your mo I, I, I'm, Joe, is most happiest when you're doing what? Eating it up. What is your favorite part about the Kerwood Festival? Mr. Owasso finale by far. What is your favorite sport? Which is Saturday, 6 o'clock in the beer tent. Saturday, 6 p.m. <laughs> what is your favorite sport? Golf. Favorite way to spend a Sunday? <sighs> hanging out with my wife, coffee in the morning, maybe nine holes of golf, and then just hanging out at the house in the afternoon. Describe yourself as a kid. Quiet. Polite, creative. Sounds like a good kid. Elephant ear or corn dog? Walking taco. <laughs> good. What advice would you give your 16 year old self? Wow. Take chances. Kerwood Parade, Heritage, Kerwood Heritage Parade, or Kerwood Kids Parade? Oh, God. Can I do both? You can do both. I'm doing both. <laughs> what Love is them. a must-read book? Something that I've read or haven't read that I something that somebody must read, like a book you would recommend. Oh gosh, I'm going to say Watership Down. What is your only book I've ever read twice? All right, Watership Down. What is your favorite podcast? Besides this one, okay. This Besides this one. one, Joe Rogan. Joe Rogan's a good one. Yeah. If you were stranded on an island with only one album for the rest of your life, what would it be? Childhood favorite, Bob Seger, Live Bullet. Solid. Yeah. Who is the greatest Mr. Owasso in history? That's impossible to answer because once you're Mr. Owasso, you merge with all the other past Mr. Owasso's to form one you organism. become plural, yeah, Mr. Owasso. Yeah, there's only one, yeah. A movie that you could watch over and over again. Clint Eastwood, High Plains Drifter. If Hollywood made a movie about you, who would they cast? Or who would you like to see cast as you? Well, it'd have to be Dwayne The Rock Johnson. <laughs> I can see it. <laughs> I can see it. Apple or Android? Apple. MSU or U of M? I'm a CMU guy, but MSU. Favorite quote? You might as well like where you're at because that's where you are. Love that. Favorite place that you've ever been? Rome. If you had one last meal, what are you eating? I can't say walking taco on this one. Main <laughs> sure Street Pizza. Main Street Pizza. Ooh, I love Main Street Pizza. And pepperoni mushrooms. Yeah, That's mine. Pepperoni mushrooms, extra cheese. There you go. <laughs> All right. Um, what is the most, or what is a very underrated Kerwood Festival activity?
The laying of the wreath at the gravesite of James Oliver Kirkwood. Oh, I didn't even know that was a thing. Very cool. When underrated, is that? It's underrated. Yeah. Yeah, we do, that, we do that Thursday before um, opening ceremony. Very cool. Yep. Might be in the line of work that I do too. I don't know yeah, if yeah. I'm affected by that <laughs> or not. That's true. That's Just true. Kind of meaningful and important. <laughs> what is one random fact about you? I, yeah, yeah, I am left handed but right armed. Okay. That's so weird. I don't know why Makes I shared that. What, oh, <laughs> what is a totally irrational fear you have? Totally irrational? Uh, alien invasion. If you get at any job in the world, what would it be? Oh, as soon as Pat Sajak retires, I am the next host of Wheel of Fortune. Wheel of Fortune. Yeah. <laughs> okay, you're in line. <laughs> uh, what is your love language? French. I'm going to say honesty. Okay. If you could uh, broadcast a message to the entire world right now, what would it be? I'm at the Kerwood Festival. There you go. Starting next Thursday. <laughs> what yeah. is your proudest achievement? Achievement? I don't know if this is an achievement. Becoming a father and now a grandfather. Yeah. I love the name Nash. Yeah. What is something important you've learned in your life that could help others succeed? Well, su succeed is a strange one to define, but just be passionate about what you do. Love it. In your opinion, what, what sets successful people? Again, I agree with you. The definition is different for everyone, but what sets successful people apart from unsuccessful people? I think someone who is successful um, looks forward to getting up and going to work or working towards their, their passion. Knows where they're going. People who yeah. get up and regret having to get up in the morning. Yeah. That, that's a struggle tough. with me as it's far tough. as success goes. Yeah. All right. Question number 50. He did it, man. Really? He did oh, it. Oh, wow. Okay. With everything going on in your life, what makes you happy these days? Most happy these days? Oh, being able to spend time with my grandson, just getting a picture of my grandson and see what he's doing today. Yeah. Very yeah. Cool. Just and a simple picture. He? He's seven and a half months. Seven and a half months. Yeah. <clears throat> All right. So yeah. you're getting. So into, keep those pictures coming. You're getting to that time where he's going to start <laughs> taking some steps. He's going to start That's saying true. some words. I think he's going to walk before he crawls. Yeah. 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 I had one, we had one kid that did that. Yeah. Won't that. Well, good job, man. You did it. I'm, I feel like I'm, I know everything about you now. That was surprising that it was 50. Yeah. It, it went pretty it fast. It goes quick, right? And everyone now knows all the things about Joe. You're going to yeah. have people coming up to you this weekend offering you walking tacos. I feel like all my answers were passion and walking tacos. Yes. It was like 25% of my answers. 48 of them were passion and walking tacos. <laughs> <laughs> good job. Thank Studio you. Studio audience, round of applause Thank you. for Joe. Thank you. Well, Joe, thank you so much. We're going to have a little segment here. We're going to do a little game. We're going to do some Kerwood trivia. I was told that we might do something. You that. versus me. Yeah. And I don't know a ton, so hopefully I don't smoke you here. I'm Casey Lambert, and welcome to James Oliver Kerwood Trivia. Today, we'll be playing to see who can collect the most Kerwood Festival stuffed animals. Our contestants first, hailing from Owasso, Michigan, he is the brand daddy, Tony Nash. Thank you for having me. And from the Kerwood Festival, El Presidente himself and Mr. Owasso winner, Joe Peterson. I know nothing about James Oliver Kerwood, so this should be good. Gentlemen, here are the rules. They are very simple. You'll each be asked a question, multiple choice. After you answer the question correctly, you will receive a beautiful stuffed animal similar to what you would get at the Kerwood Festival Carnival. If you answer incorrectly, your opponent will receive a stuffed animal. Most stuffed animals at the end wins James Oliver Kerwood. And what do you win? Pride. So so Pride. we want we want the stuffed animals. You want the stuffed animals. I want to go home with a hand. Now I've tried to win my wife's stuffed animals at the festival before and I never have luck. So this is my opportunity to go home with some fabulous prizes for my wife. Right you are. This Gentlemen. Seem, this seems easier than throwing a baseball at Milk bottles yeah, or yeah, for sure. ping pongs into a fishbowl. Or, so we'll or so you think, Joe. Or so you think. All right, gentlemen. First question goes to Tony. 
James Oliver Kerwood left high school before graduation, but passed the entrance exam and was immediately accepted into this university. Was it A, Harvard, B, University of Michigan, or C, Michigan Agricultural College? Ooh. I'm gonna go Mac, Michigan Agricultural College. Tony, that answer is incorrect. incorrect. Oh, man. Joe, right. you've won you, yourself a you. fantastic mermaid stuffed oh, animal. Oh, oh, I was so oh, hoping to get the it. mermaid. Yes. <laughs> All right, of course, was University of Michigan. I was yeah. going to say that, but I thought that was a random choice. I thought it's got to go with the random one. You're I a really U of M didn't guy, aren't you? Where I he, am, I am. Yeah. I just really didn't know. So, <laughs> University of Michigan, where he graduated with a degree in journalism, of course. Makes sense. All right, question number two. This goes for El Presidente on. Joe Peterson. In 1907, James Oliver Kerwood returned to his hometown of Owasso to publish his first novel. But it wasn't until 1923 when he built this famous yellow centerpiece. Was it A, the Kerwood Mansion, B, Kerwood what? Castle, or C, <laughs> School Bus Park? Wait, wait. I am leaning he so got, hard towards he got this. C. He's the president. But I got it. where he went to college. <laughs> All right, this is rigged. It was the castle. Kermit right. Castle, Joe, you are correct. Give me a. All you right. have received Yo, your second you stuffed animal. Baby here. Yoda? My wife loves Baby Yoda. That is correct. <laughs> Tony, where, who wrote these questions? <laughs> All right. Question number three. This one goes to Tony. All right, let's hear it. Kerwood, sadly, passed away in 1927 at the age of 49. Sadly. What was his cause of death? Was it A, heart failure, B, chagas disease, or C, a Florida animal bite? You know the answer to this? Mm -hmm. It's not Kerwood Castle, I know that. <laughs> Give me the choices again. Can I phone a friend? A, heart failure, B, chagas disease, or C, a Florida animal bite? Well, he was a man of nature. Uh, I don't know what chagas disease is. Can you use it in a sentence? Yes. James Oliver Kerwood did not have chagas disease. Okay, thank you. <laughs> thank you. So it's A or C, heart failure, or a Florida animal bite? Correct, a Florida animal bite. Man, I don't think he spent a lot of time in the South. Um, Five seconds. I'm going to go with a heart failure. That is... Incorrect. It was, in fact, a Florida animal bite. Not a specific animal. It was never determined, but he uh, died shortly after being bitten. I got to go with my yeah. gut here. I got to go with my gut. He He's... was in the water and something stung him. And that is correct. They're not sure exactly a bite what or it was. A it could have been an octopi. Octopi. Yes. One of those rare Florida octopi. Yeah. He's getting quite a collection over there. This is unfair. Tony, you could end this game in a tie okay. if you try hard. I will try. All right. Joe, in 1916... Kerwood penned one of his most famous works, subtitled A Romance of the Wild. What was its title? Was it The Black Bear King, The Grizzly King, or The Polar Bear King? The Grizzly King. That is correct. It was The Grizzly King. <laughs> Another stuffed uh, animal for El Presidente. Get together. Did you guys get together before really this? Joe Peterson. I'm starting to feel a little bad here. He's got four stuffed animals. Ooh, and I saw my iPad that I started with here. <laughs> all right. This is not right. Tony. All right. I like Give me an easy one. Come on. This is your last question. All right. Let's go. Possibly his greatest quote came from the Grizzly King. It reads, the greatest thrill is not to kill, but to blank. Was it live? Laugh or love? The greatest, the greatest thrill is not to kill, but to live, laugh, or love. I got to go with love. Went with love? I'd go with live if I were Dan, you. <laughs> Dan Damron is shaking his head. Tony, would you like to second guess that? I'm going to go with live. That live is correct. Yeah, Congratulations, good job. Tony. Oh, I got a paw patrol. You've got yeah. yourself a paw patrol, and you didn't even have to knock down any milk jugs. Pirate? pirate puppy. Listen. This my, I'll tell my wife I won this at the carnival for her. Great. That's home, the huh? first time he's done it. You're welcome, Danica. And our final question goes to Joe. Is that for that giant? Like, what is that? A that is, in fact, a seal. A seal. That doesn't look like a seal. Yeah, it could be an otter yeah. or it could be a seal. James Oliver Kerwood had one daughter. What was her name? Was it A, Jane, B, Mary, or C, Carlotta? Carlotta. 
That is correct. He it just, is no, Carlotta. Carlotta or Charlotta. It is Carlotta. I don't know the pronunciation. But. Yes. And um, you go home with a giant sea otter. Yes. Oh, Congratulations. Uh, as expected, the president of the Kerwood Festival, Joe Peterson, got one is our James chance. Oliver Kerwood winner. Congratulations, do, Tony. Better luck at the next game. I do feel a little bit bad for the pirate puppy. <laughs> no, this uh, is great. over here. <laughs> the pirate puppy is going to a I very worthwhile pirate. home. <laughs> Thanks for tuning hey, in, guys. Worked, man. Well, listen, you clearly are the president of of the Kerwood Festival because you knew all the answers. And we're going to probably see some of these animals in some of the carnival games now that people to win back, right? Yeah, I would think so. <laughs> Just throw them in there. Just keep giving back to the community. That's right. That's what we do. Well, man, that was awesome. That was awesome. Thank you for it being a fun. good sport and doing that. We'd love yeah. having you on the show today. And we are really, really looking forward to the festival. Any parting words for the audience? The Kerwood Festival that has been 12 months in the planning will start officially... Let me say unofficially, Wednesday, Wine and Cheese at Fortitude. What a wonderful event. Don't miss out on that. Opening ceremony will be Thursday at the Castle. Again, just an amazing way to start our weekend. Um, Friday, Carnival, Marketplace, Arts and Crafts at the Castle. Um, Shy town will be playing in the beer tent. Don't miss these guys. It is a wonderful show. Saturday morning, it's parade. no, oh, kids parade. parade Thank Friday. you. You're welcome. There's so much. I There's know. so much. I we know. Kids parade, and then you can go out, go out to Chi Town. Um, Saturday morning, no better way than to start your day with a 5K, maybe even a 10K. You can come to the beer tent and have a Bloody Mary afterwards. There's all kinds of fun activities um, throughout the town on Saturday. Don't miss out. Um, the parade will start at two o'clock. Make sure you get a good spot. And just enjoy that like, um, like it's meant to be for our community. So just enjoy that. And then the Mr. Wasso finale will start at 6 o'clock. Don't wait till 6 o'clock because we're going to fill the house. So get there early and get your seat and just have a great time supporting our three candidates this year. And then there's entertainment afterwards, of course. And then Sunday is just a fun, relaxing day throughout the festival. So I know I missed a whole bunch of things, but check us out. Go to the website, or you can stop into the office and say hi. And, and again, like Tony said, you can sign up and volunteer for next year. We've got <laughs> lots to do. So, And watch out for flying T-shirts if you're in the parade. Be careful. So I'm just joking. Just be careful. <laughs> I'm just joking. All right, man. Well, I appreciate you again coming on the show, and uh, we've enjoyed having you as our guest. And like I said, we're looking really appreciate forward it. to the festival. We're looking forward to getting some great video footage, and I'm going to find, I'm going to make sure the guys know to find a video of you eating a walking taco, because I think that has to go on the I, there video. There will be plenty of opportunities yeah. for that. <laughs> and showing some passion. Yes. That'd be great as well. <laughs> Passionately eating my walking taco. Yes. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you all for joining us. Thank you for getting to know Joe with us. And uh, thanks for coming along on the ride. Uh, as, let us know in the comments what you think about 50 questions, if you think that's a good segment. And let us know what guests you'd like to hear from and uh, learn a little bit more about them. We have some awesome people in our community. Uh, as my mother always said, you can't and never could until you tried. So go out there and try something great, my friends. And don't take the easy way out. We'll see you next time. <laughs>